In a brightly lit room, a man breathes heavily, his face flushed and emitting soft sounds of pleasure. The other man, hovering close, asks in a low, intimate voice, Ajun, does it feel good? Ajun, overwhelmed by the sensations, replies breathlessly, Yes, I like it. It feels good. The man then asks, Do you know who I am? Struggling to focus, Ajun admits, No, I don't. At that moment, Ajun reaches the peak of his pleasure. As he recovers, the man leans in closer, his breath warm against Ajun's face, and reveals, I am Seol. Ajun jolts awake, his eyes snapping open as he emerges from the vivid dream. A wave of guilt washes over him as he processes the impure fantasy he just heard about Choi Seol. Despite spending the entire weekend fanboying over him, he now berates himself, thinking he is still a sexually frustrated pervert. His alarm clock suddenly blares, breaking the silence. With a heavy sigh, Ajun resigns himself to the day ahead and begins to get ready for school. While at school, someone approaches Ajun, asking if he could take some files to the teacher's room since he is headed that way. Ajun agrees, accepting the responsibility. As he makes his way there, he grumbles inwardly about the weight of the files, which keep wobbling in his arms. Along the school hallways, Students greet him warmly. Internally, he regrets his decision to carry all the files by himself. Meanwhile, two passing students exchange whispers, catching Ajun's attention. He overhears their conversation, prompting him to ponder the cause of the unusual commotion at school that day. Suddenly, the realization that it's already Monday hits Ajun, bringing a sense of disappointment as his weekend of fanboying over Seoul has come to an end. However, he reminisces about the joy he experienced over the weekend which fuels his resolve to make it through the week until Friday, when he can once again indulge in his fanboy activities. He is determined to see see all in person before he dies. In the midst of these thoughts, Ajun accidentally bumps with someone, causing him to stumble and fall to the ground. He opens his mouth to apologize, but his words catch in his throat as he looks up and his eyes freeze in shock. Standing before him is none other than Seol. Seol kneels down and extends a hand to help Ajun up, asking if he's alright, while Ajun remains dazed, unable to believe that his bias has suddenly appeared before him. The scene shifts to the teacher's room, where the principal gathers everyone's attention to announce the arrival of the broadcast production crew he had previously mentioned. Ajun, however, experiences a mental breakdown, feeling overwhelmed by his lack of awareness due to his absence at the time of the principal's initial announcement. The broadcasting crew's producer steps forward to deliver her introduction, informing everyone of the filming of the pilot episode for a new variety show scheduled to take place at the school over the next two months. Amidst this announcement, Ajun finds himself grappling with a sense of disbelief, unable to discern whether the presence of his wife see all before him is a dream or reality. Following the announcement of filming, the producer introduces see all, assuming everyone's familiarity with him due to his widespread fame. Ajun, feeling elated, internally agrees with the producer's statement, acknowledging that Seol's fame knows no bounds and is recognized by people of all ages and genders. Seol respectfully bows to greet everyone, introducing himself as Joey Seol from the idol group A1. He expresses his excitement about shooting a variety show for the first time, acknowledging that he still has much to learn. However, he looks forward to working with everyone and promises to give his best effort, hoping for their support. His introduction receives applause from all present, encouraging him as he begins this new venture. Internally, Ajun is in a state of disbelief, utterly astonished by the unexpected encounter with Seol. Never did he imagine he would have the chance to see his bias in person. To Ajun, Seol appears incredibly radiant and captivating, surpassing mere bias. He acknowledges that every aspect of Seol, from his facial features to his personality, exudes perfection, not just from his own perspective but objectively as well. In that moment, Ajun's gaze meets Seol's, and a smile from Seol sends Ajun's heart racing. Mentally overwhelmed, Ajun expresses gratitude for the simple act of making eye contact with his bias, but the unexpected smile elevates his joy even further. He feels as though he has hit the jackpot today. As the lunchtime bell rings throughout the school, signaling the break, the principal suggests that they all have lunch together and offers to give producer Nam a tour of the school. Acknowledging the offer, Producer Nam expresses gratitude to the principal. 
Every one gathers for lunch and the school cafeteria is filled with a bustling atmosphere as students gather around Seol. Their excitement palpable as they snap pictures of him. Meanwhile, Ajun finds himself unable to resist stealing glances at Seol. Internally, he reflects on the surrealness of eating in the same space as his wives, even if it means eating school cafeteria food. However, he ponders whether Seol should be eating something more nutritious than cafeteria food to sustain energy during filming. Caught in his thoughts, when Seol glances in his direction, Ajun hastily starts stuffing food into his mouth, feeling flustered under Seol's gaze. One of Ajun's female co-workers expresses astonishment at the student's excitement over A1 and questions the extent of their fame. Another co-worker responds, confirming their widespread popularity since their debut and citing their numerous hit songs. A third co-worker joins the conversation, noting their daughter's admiration for the group but expressing uncertainty about the number of members, debating whether it's five or six. Ajun reacts with a twitch upon hearing his co-workers debate about the number of members in the idol group A1. Internally, he notes that both co-workers are mistaken, as the group initially consisted of five members but one member left, leaving the current count at four. During their conversation, one of Ajun's co-workers addresses him and questions his knowledge of idol groups, assuming his youth would make him familiar with them. Ajun jolts and stammers, Huh? No, I'm not. He states that he is not knowledgeable about idols and doesn't have much interest in them either. However, he acknowledges Ewan's fame, admitting he has heard some of their songs. As Ajun nervously deflects, Seol sitting nearby overhears the exchange. He pauses eating and stares at Ajun, a curious look in his eyes. Internally, Ajun apologizes to Seol for pretending not to know him while he is right in front of him. He rationalizes that his reputation as a teacher is at stake. If anyone finds out he is Seol's friend, it would create an awkward situation. Moreover, he considers that Seol must already be exhausted by the constant attention from students, and knowing that a teacher is also his friend would likely make him feel uncomfortable. Ajun resolves that it's best to admire him from a distance. Ajun, considering himself a true fan, resolves that he is content just to observe Seol from a distance. However, only a few minutes after affirming this to himself, producer Nam informs him that he would be Seol's co-teacher for the variety show. Caught off guard, Ajun exclaims, Wait, hold on, me? Mentally, he panics, thinking I just wanted to watch him from afar. Seol walks up to Ajun and expresses his desire for good teamwork. Surprised, Ajun questions why he was chosen. Seol responds with a warm smile, gently grasps Ajun's hands and says, Because Mr. Na Ajun, you are my type. Ajun, shocked, stammers in disbelief, replying with a puzzled, What? 